We love when something new comes out in the luxury world. And so today we are going to talk about the new Gucci GG Matalasse line. Now, I think that Gucci is incredibly smart because if you take a look here, you can see that like the general gist of this line is that they have combined their best-selling, you know, iconic GG logo with puffy bags. <laughs> I mean, for those of you that are familiar, you know, you see Madelasse all the time across a lot of different brands. And essentially what that word means is when you have done a treatment to a fabric with quilting, that then makes it have a raised surface or makes it a little bit puffy. And so a lot of Saint Laurent's bags actually have the word Madelasse in the name of the style itself. And Gucci was like, you know what? I see all these other brands making all their coins off of all these different types of puffy bags. So I want to get my puffy bag coins too. So that is exactly what Gucci has done. So we're going to go through the line and I'm going to look down at my computer screen a little bit, but Overall, they've done an initial launch of several different styles of handbags, and you'll see quite a few smaller handbags in this collection, which is very smart of them. I feel like every year people keep saying that tiny bags are gonna go out of style, but it hasn't happened yet. And so for those of us, such as myself, that really like tiny bags, I'm very happy about this. There are lots of like fun, little cutesy styles to choose from. So they're predominantly handbags for now. And so I'll be really interested to see, you know, based on the initial read and sales that they get from these handbags, are they then going to scale it out to like small leather goods, to other types of accessories, shoes, things like that. So I think that'll be really interesting. So taking a look at the line, you can see that this first style here is a very classic to Gucci shoulder bag style. This is something that Gucci does in lots of different colorways, lots of different fabrications. This style is not new, but you can see here, they've decided to do it in three different sizes. They've got what they are calling, you know, the biggest one, the medium, they've got a small and they've got a mini. And I think it's really smart that they called it a mini because they've left themselves space in case they want to go a little bit smaller, they can always go like nano or micro, you know, something like that. So I love that Gucci has also given themselves the ability to really expand this line because also accordingly, like their biggest size right now is a medium, but in case big bags do come back as everyone is saying they are right now, they could even go with an even bigger, more jumbo oversized version. And then the overall like naming and nomenclature will still work for this line. And you can see that they've got, you know, basically like the neutral leathers covered here. They've got black, they've got this gorgeous like toffee, caramel, dark brown color, which is absolutely stunning. They've got gray, they've got a light tan. And then this is the one, this green right here is what makes me think that they definitely took a page or quite a few pages out of Bottega Veneto's book. So take a look at this bag and tell me, what does it look very similar to? A padded cassette bag. I mean, Gucci took a lot of different elements from Bottega's ever popular, ever successful padded cassette bag. And I mean, I do understand it. It has been a wildly successful bag. And obviously, you know, both Gucci and Bottega are owned by the Caring Group, you know, a much bigger parent company that owns lots of different luxury brands. So probably like if I'm like reading between the lines here and I think about what had happened, I think like some exec at Caring Group was like, you know what Gucci, you're a huge brand. You've got a lot of additional sales that you need to achieve this year. Why don't you go puffy like everyone else is doing and let's do it based on what we know is basically the most successful puffy bag out of all of them, arguably speaking, is the Bottega Veneta padded cassette bag in that beautiful, bright, like acid green parakeet color with the gold chain. I mean, that's basically what they've done here. They've taken, you know, their interlocking GG print They've put it into a leather. They've done the Madelasse treatment. So by quilting it, they've made this very like beautiful, puffy, luscious green bag. They've added a gold chain to it. And it's very similar in shape and size to the padded cassette. 
Now, obviously, Bottega kind of put this shade of green on the map. It's a green that obviously like Kelly Green has been around for a while now and Bottega really has made that like bright acid version, you know, their signature color and it's become so popular and it's inspired a lot of other brands to put out styles in that color. Hello, I am evidence. I bought a bag essentially in this color, a little bit darker um, from the Chanel Metier d'Art collection this year. I also know that Prada has come out with their version of a green. Now I will say they've called it mango, which I know there are green mangoes, but typically like if you were to name something mango, I would think that would be the yellow color. So I feel like they had a little bit of a misnomer there, but like Prada is on the green bandwagon too. And now Gucci has done the same thing. And I feel as though Gucci has not just like really taken a lot of um, quite on the nose inspiration from the Bottega Veneta padded cassette bag, not just with the color and with the quilting, but also with the gold chain. I mean, this is actually quite a thick gold chain for Gucci. Like Gucci does not do big interlocking crazy chains on their handbags. So this is actually on the thicker side for them, a lot more substantial and weighty of a chain, but they have not just taken inspiration from Bottega, and I think they have very closely followed the launch strategy also of the Louis Vuitton Cousin bag. Think about it. The Cousin bag was a bag that, you know, really divided the luxury community in terms of who liked it and who did it. And, you know, to each their own on their opinion of the bag. But they were also inspired by, you know, the new puffy bag trend, clearly started by Bottega. And they made a few styles a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And I believe if I remember correctly, they launched it in a couple neutral colors, like a black and a gray. And what was their one pop color when they launched it? It was a bright acid green. And so while I do love this bag, and I actually think it is beautiful and is something that I personally would totally wear, I do feel like Gucci got a little bit lazy here and I feel like they really had an opportunity to make this style their own. If they had added, you know, for instance, some type of stitching that added even more texture, like in the border of the bag, that would have been something that made it really different. Or say they had um, made the sides of the bag, like the red and the green racing stripe that they use, uh, you know, in all their different styles. That could have been something that made it very true to Gucci, but you know, I've said it a couple times. I feel like they got a little bit lazy with this style, but I also understand it because like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's working for everyone else, it's probably gonna work for Gucci too. In addition to that style, they've got a lot of other fun styles. Um, they've got these two right here, which are, you know, very similar to kind of like a little dome shape. You know, everyone's got their little version of a dome. Gucci is no exception. Um, although here there is no top handle, which I think is interesting because we know a lot of folks love a little top handle moment. So this actually kind of reads to me a little bit more like cosmetic case inspired or like a vanity case inspired type of style. And if you go down, there is actually another type of vanity case type of style. So here it is also. Now this reads much more in terms of like the vanity case world, Gucci's version of it. So it's clear that they are seeing, obviously, success with Chanel and Dior having their vanity cases so popular in all their different lines that again, Gucci was like, I'm gonna get me some of that. I'm gonna like come out with my version of it. And I do really like the golden chains here. I think they work really well with the overall shape and size of these vanity cases. So I'm not mad at it, but again, like Gucci is taking a lot of inspiration from a lot of other brands. And I feel like they could have done something a little bit different to kind of make this line their own. Now they've also got, you know, a typical set of camera bags. Gucci always includes some type of camera bag in their line, so that makes sense. And they've also got something here. They've not named it a bowling bag, but it is very similar in shape to, you know, the typical bowling bag style that we see from all the different brands. It's a little bit, you know, it does taper out. So it's a little bit more of like a 3D trapezoid type of situation here. So, um, you know, they've got that too. And then I think arguably my favorite style in this collection is the mini version of, you know, the little bowling bag. And it doesn't really read like a bowling bag in the mini size. It's just so cute though. It is so small. It is teeny tiny. Let me see if I can pull up like a little photo with a model. It looks really small. Oh gosh, let me see if I can find the dimensions of it. 
yeah, it's seven and a half inches wide. So I mean, it's like, you know, maybe this, this big. So really cute, really fun little bag. Um, I really like the top handle there and it looks like the chain is removable. So it's really good because you can kind of decide how you want to wear this bag. And we love a girl that gives you options. So I love that about this. I will say for such a small bag for Gucci, this one is on the pricier side. This one is about $3,000. And I think Gucci, you know, is really quite famous for always doing um, a small size that is a more accessible price point. And they even talked about it in their recent, you know, pricing strategy, Capital Markets Day um, presentation. I'll link the video where we do like a huge deep dive on that. They talked about retaining, you know, their more accessible entry price point bags in order to attract new customers to the brand. So I actually am quite surprised that they are charging $3,000 for this size bag that does feel a little bit you know steep in my opinion so I am surprised by that but you know what Gucci they are the experts they've been around forever so clearly they know something that I don't know and very surprisingly I mean the large size of it it's only about $500 more at $3,400 so I don't know if that makes all that much sense to me because they do seem very different in terms of size then they've also got, you know, a very stereotypical wallet on chain. Gucci's always got a wallet on chain. But I did also just want to highlight, I think, one of my other favorite styles here, and that is the tote bag. When I first looked at this line, you know, I quickly took a peek through and I was like, ooh, I want to do a YouTube video about it. And then as I was thinking about it, I was like, how many puffy structured tote bags have we seen from other brands? Now, obviously we know Saint Laurent has recently come out with their very big, oversized, puffy uh, bag, but it's not like a structured tote. It's very floppy, it's very soft. Whereas this is like a proper tote bag, like something that you would wear to work. I don't know if the other one really feels like formal enough for work. That could be like a good commuter bag, but I don't know about like a professional work bag, but also probably depends on like your working environment. So I really love that because I feel like these tote bags do feel different than a lot of the other tote bags on the market right now. So I think these are gonna be a really interesting style. And then they've got, you know, some other like bigger like duffel bags. They've got some like, they kind of look like pouches, kind of like toiletry cases, you know, things like that. And then they do have a couple different SLGs. So they've got a big long continental wallet, but obviously we know like market trends are shifting much more towards smaller wallets. So they've done a couple different types of card holders. They've done the singular versions and then like the fold over ones. So they've got a few different card holders that you can choose from. And then the one accessory kind of outside of the handbag and SLG world is a belt that they have done here. And I think that this is a really interesting one because it looks like a very thick waist belt. And I don't know about you all, but when I am using a waist belt, I do not want to add any extra volume there. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to make my waist smaller by cinching it in with a belt. So I don't know how successful the puffy waist belt is going to be. So I'll be really interested to see if I see any unboxings of this belt on YouTube because I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I don't have much faith in this style. But I will say it is at like a pretty fair price point. It's $6.95, which in the world of luxury belts like isn't too bad. So overall, that is really everything that I can see about the Gigi Matalase line here on the Gucci website. If I can at some point, I will try to run into Gucci, try some on. If I can, I'll try and vlog it a little bit so I can kind of show you what it really looks like like on the body, you know, so you just kind of see like for yourself. Is it something that you want to invest in or not? But overall so far, I would love to hear your initial thoughts on this line. And if this is something that you think you want to invest in, are there any pieces that so far are really jumping out at you? Or are you gonna kind of like hang tight a little bit, see if other people start buying it and then kind of make your decision? Definitely drop your thoughts down in the comments below. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really love it if you could just give this video a little like. Just give a little thumbs up down in the corner below. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? You need to subscribe to my channel. So that way you can get all my latest content about all things shopping delivered straight to you. Thank you again so much for watching. My name is Lily and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye everyone.